Amble has a predominantly industrial heritage, largely around it being a, an active port, so um, it's always had some fishing associated with the town, but the, the real growth was around the exports of coal. And um, the railway used to bring the coal into the port and then it was shipped um, either out further down south or elsewhere in Europe. It was a working port, very much a working port, and the town grew up around that. People's perceptions of Armble um, were not particularly good about 30 years ago, and there was a, a feeling that the councils hadn't invested in the town. Everywhere was grimy, you know, the stonework was black. I get quite excited about the work that the Development Trust does because it's brought about such a change in Arbel, and that every project has something that it brings with it. People were obviously feeling very strongly about the lack of investment, and they held a series of public meetings, and it was decided to set up a development trust as the vehicle for regeneration. The trust has been here in, in a period of real change for the town. You know, um, 25 years ago, you would struggle to sell a house in Amble. And now with the growth in tourism, you know, you really struggle to buy somewhere here, which creates its own problems, but it is a, a real indicator as how the town's changed over that time. There wasn't the money in the town, people weren't, weren't coming. But then, you know, things got better, and like everything's renewed. You got a new caravan site, the pier's done. That pier, years ago, it got renewed. If it hadn't been for the pier, I don't think Amber would have been the thing it is now, like to be honest because uh, people, people start to come once that opened up, it kind of got the new, new gateway. You walk around the streets and all that, you see how many car parks is full and how many people are here. They must be coming for something. One of the biggest achievements of the Animal Development Trust would be the Seafood Centre and the Amble Harbour Village. Over the last six or seven years, the Seafood Centre has gone from from nothing to quite a, a busy enterprise. Um, turnover's gone up year on year. Um, staffing's gone up year on year. We also have the Lobster Hatchery, which is a really important conservation programme. One of the main tourist draws for the town is the fact that it's an active working harbour. And one of the principal catch is local, is, is lobsters. So we, we look to augment the, the lobster stocks by um, rearing lobsters in the hatchery. We got the opportunity for the hatchery. That brings me in to work for the development trust. And of course we incorporated the uh, fish counter, which goes down really well. The fishing boats we get in are largely um, for crab and lobster. So anything else really has to uh, get be brought in from a our market in, in North Shields. We get our uh, mussels from Shelland, the, the Shelland Blues, which are lovely mussels. Um, we get oysters from uh, Holy Island. I believe that the community should have the power to be listened to. We have an open door policy. Anybody can come through here and know that they can express their views and they will be listened to. Another thing that we're very proud of is the Ambler, which is the community newspaper. It goes out to every household in the town once every two months. And we've actually been delivering that for over 20 years, which is an achievement in itself. We try and cover everything that's happening in Amble, news, events, local issues. And that was the whole reason why it came into being in the first place. The idea was to help grow a sense of community identity and community cohesion by informing people of what was going on and letting them have their say. Anybody can contribute, that's the, that's the inclusive spirit, um, whether you've been here five minutes or 50 years. The Development Trust has just been astounding in how much it's supported the Ambler. It's allowed the paper to grow. It's, given a sense of autonomy to the editorial group. We will take on issues that we think are, are detrimental to the town. We will speak up and challenge some authorities. And I think the community actually really appreciates that, that you know, they feel that we are 
speaking and, and giving them a voice. One of the hopes for the future and plans for the future for the Amble Development Trust would be to facilitate more affordable housing for the younger folks. Particularly the last two years, uh, there's been a, a massive boom in property prices. We're really keen on doing something with young people's housing in the town. You know, how do they get uh, on the first rung of the property ladder or, or how do they just afford um, house rental? Making sure people can see the town that they live and grow up on is somewhere that they can live over the long term. At the moment, we're in the middle of trying to install sculptures, formerly a sculpture trail called Boardwalk, which is a bird walk, and that's colloquial. So the sculptures will range from Hawksley Nature Reserve and come right through the town along the River Colquitt. Drywater have been working with the community um, to deliver the um, community engagement programme for the Boardwalk Sculpture Trail. So we've worked with five schools locally, we've worked with um, older people, with families and young children and with our dementia group. It's really, really important for ideas and sparks of ideas to come from the community and for those ideas to be supported and to be developed because that's the way that you get the whole community engaged and um, coming together. I think the real benefit of locality is kind of being inspired by other members, but it, it's that kind of compare and contrast to see how people do things differently, how people challenge the status quo in, in their areas. Um, so I think it's really kind of mining um, other organisations for, for good ideas and approaches. The benefits of being part of Locali are the network and I would say support. You might not actually need that support very often, but it's known that there's somebody there that can give you the answer or that can help you, or as we do, point you in the right direction. On the 3rd of July 1936, when the Mauritania sailed north to be broken up in uh, Scotland, it was a message from the town council, you know, to the finest ship on the sea. And then the message came back, thank you to the last and kindliest port in England. And we'd like to try and live up to that. It's known as the, the friendliest port, and that, that's something that we're, we're looking to develop further. Um, but how do, we, how do we encourage that friendliness and how do we embed that as a core value of the town? The town's growing at a rapid rate, there's you know, thousands of new houses going in and it's how we not just kind of preserve the, the soul and feel of the town but how do we add to it? In the last few years there's been a huge influx of housing developments and I think any town would struggle with that and their sense of identity. If I'm looking to the future, I hope the Ambler will still be able to speak for all the new people. And I, I hope that we'll be able to reflect their interests as well as keeping a sense of community. We want to help with the, the dynamic of the town in terms of its growth, to enable new people coming into the town to feel part of the community and help that to happen. There is still a very strong sense of community and a very powerful community in Amble. People are very passionate, very vocal, um, and the Amble Development Trust is there to be a voice for those people.